Welcome to Amateur Redneck Workshop and I'm Harold the Resident Redneck. This is a sort of a, a rerun of the Edge Finder video because a lot of people felt like I uh, hadn't gone into great enough depth of testing to show where the run out was coming from and things like that and I wasn't you know terribly well prepared because I didn't have anything 20 millimeters to check the 20 millimeter collet. Well, I cranked up the lathe and I made something 20 millimeters. So now we've got something to check the collet. We're going to check the spindle. We're going to check the collets. We're going to check everything. So hang on to your hats. Here we go. All right, this is a new indicator that I bought. I wanted uh, <laughs> 10 thousandths, but I got millimeters instead by accident. But I haven't used it very much at all because it is millimeters and I'm not into that sort of thing. But you can see it sticking up inside the spindle, up inside the spindle bore. And I'll bring it down a little bit. Now, of course, the, the dial will recede some because that's a taper. And I'll have to reposition it back to uh, above zero every time because of the fact that I'm going down the side of a taper. I think you can. Uh, appreciate that all right so we will zoom in on the thing try to get focus on it I hope maybe well I may have to stop and restart or something there that looked like focus okay so anyway this thing is 0 0.01 millimeters per graduation that's almost four ten thousandths of an inch so less than half of a thousand though, for each graduation and we'll crank this little booger up and uh, start eat it's the very top of the, the taper in the spindle we're going to come downwards with it all right there you go can you see that we'll start moving her down and you can see that it gets further away from the side of the spindle because of the taper I will, if I go the right way, I'll move it back up close. And it looks like maybe, maybe it vibrates one, one line. So we may have four ten thousandths, or almost four ten thousandths of, of uh, run out. As for the history of the mill, this mill is relatively new. I bought it, uh, I guess it's January, brand new, so, and I, you know, not being a production shop or anything, I haven't used it a heck of a lot. And you can see as I'm coming down, down through the bore, there's not any change in the amount of run out that I was picking up. Get closer to the side again. Keep on coming down. Now, I don't know if you're willing to take my word for it or not, but it's that way all the way to the bottom because I started at the bottom and went up watching it before I turned on the camera. little jumps you see or the large jumps are when I move the, the knee down to get further down in this bore. Hopefully you'll take my word for it. It's this way all the way down to the beginning. Moving slow, which may, may be boring you to death, I guess you can 
always run this at double speed or something. But rather than having somebody tell me, well, you stop before you got all the way, I'm going to run you through the whole boring thing right down to the bottom. Now we're right at the opening here where the taper gets really, really bad or big or whatever. But this is beyond the space where the collet touches. This is the, the tapered part that goes uh, where, well anyway, this doesn't touch the collet, this part right here. So now that we'll stop and put the collet in. All right. I've Carefully cleaned the collet, carefully checked for burrs, and put the 20 millimeter piece I machined into it. And so we're going to turn it on and see what kind of run out we get. That looks to be pretty much exactly the same as we got from the inside of the spindle, which is about one mark, I think. I guess that's what it is. Alright, so now then we're going to pull that little piece of aluminum out of the spindle and we will reinsert the edge finder. Alright, I did a lot of careful cleaning and deburring and all that sort of thing. I put it back in there and this time it looked like there's a total run out of all. I would guess six thousandths instead of the nine or so that we had before. So I may have knocked a couple thousands of birds off of it or something. Anyway, it's still not exactly dead on, if you know what I'm saying. Alright, now then, I know the noise is driving some people crazy. I had one viewer say he had to turn it off because the noise is more than he can take. And it is an annoying noise, so we'll move on to the next part. Alright, once again we've got the half inch collet and the half inch drill rod and we'll see what we got. And that looks to me like about three thousandths. Now I think that the last time I checked it it showed two. So I don't know why the difference but uh, and then again it could be my memory. Who knows? But there you are. It's, it's a little bit better than the other collet, no doubt, but only by a couple of thousands. And just out of curiosity, we'll put the uh, half inch shank edge finder in there and see what we see. Alright, there is the uh, original half inch shank edge finder. I carefully wiped it and felt it all over for the burrs and everything. And that's I look to me like about 3,000 run out, same as the drill rod. So I'm sure that this edge finder is probably perfectly round and the drill rod is perfectly round. It's just a little run out from the, from the collet. And I don't know. It seemed like a lot of money for collets, but it looks like they're not as wonderful as I had expected. All right, folks, that's the rerun. And, uh, oh, my buddy Chuck from Rito, the Outside Screwball Channel. Everybody knows Chuck's a certified nice guy. And he sent me uh, a link to uh, a channel called Dragon Man. And this guy's my kind of guy. He's 75 years old, works six and a half days a week, loves it because he loves to work. He's got a huge museum, 
of uh, you know army stuff, and he's he's got a, a machine shop where he overhauls motorcycle engines and such. And I think he said he had like 16 milling machines in there. He's got huge buildings, and he's also got the uh, shooting range that he runs on the side. So the man's got a little of everything. He's full of energy and go, and he's probably good for another 20 years at this. I'll, I'll put a link down in uh, the doobly-doo. So let's see what Bubba's doing. Here it is, July. Hot as the devil's hometown. And the boss said he's got the thermostat set on minus 30. I'm afraid to let my nose drip, get snot sickles hanging down. Anyway, we're going to hear about Boudreaux and Thibodeau. They went down to Orange Grove and rented themselves a boat. Go fishing. They was heading out in the water and they didn't go very far. And they hit a stump. Knocked the motor off the boat. It went straight to the bottom. So they're sitting there in the boat looking at it. And Boudreaux says to Thibodeau, Thibodeau is your what are we going to do now? Tim says, well, he says, uh, me, I, th I think we're, we're going to have to go down there and get that motor. Boodle says, yeah. Tim says, yeah. He says, you, you jump in there, he says, and you get that motor. He says, and I'll throw this rope over the side. You can pull on it, you know, if you get need some help. And uh, so Boodle did it. He jumps over the side of the boat, goes straight to the bottom. And the water's real clear, so... Thibodeau can see what he's doing, and he looks over there, and there's Boudreaux in there, got a hold of that motor, and he's yanking on the rope. Thibodeau just jumps up down the boat. He says, oh, he says, that dead blame idiot, look at him down there. Look at it. That ain't, he knows you can't start the motor like that. And he leans over the boat, and he yells under the water, choke it, you idiot, choke it. Well, that's all, folks. Uh, Y'all try to subscribe if you're not already a subscriber leave a comment if you got something to say and above all remember keep on keeping on bye now